Hi there, it's uh, me Audrina Lane here and I thought it was a special treat to all my subscribers on YouTube. I do a little uh, excerpt from a short story that I've written and it's called Drive By and hopefully it will make its way into some sort of anthology at some point either end of this year or probably start of next year. Anyway, here it is, Drive By Part 1 and if you're all good I might read Drive By Part 2 a bit later on. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this uh, short story. The heat of the day had started to tail off as the cooler breeze whipped up my curls. I'd missed the sun, having been sat in a hotel conference room, signing books and chatting to readers with 30 other authors. I'd had a decent day, smiled for selfies, and chatted with author friends, both new and old. It was always the highlight of my months to attend a book signing and feel the adoration that my words evoked. Little did they know that the men I created and the love scenes I wrote were a far cry from my real life. My sports car was my pride and joy, and with the summer sun falling like a fireball from the deepening sky, I pressed my foot to the pedal as the miles started to drive by. Next to my writing and my dog Mansell, yes, named after a Formula One driver, I had no one. My hero had betrayed me for another, and I seemed destined to never meet anyone to match my exacting standards. Well, when you get to write male characters, you can make them gorgeous, sexy, rich or poor, egotistical or just downright dirty. The music on loud, I followed the curve of the road, weaving in and out of the slower cars and lorries. I saw the envy from young lads, too young to afford a Nissan 370Z, or even just the insurance and tax. They liked to overtake and I just let them until they slowed down and then I reeled them back in and left them in a plume of dust. It always put a smile on my fa face and left them looking bemused. I was slowing down for one of the major roundabouts and above the music on my stereo I heard the deep, throaty growl of something with an engine as it slowed. A motorbike pulled up beside me and a figure, encased in black leather, put his foot down and out of the corner of my eye, I saw him turn his head my way. It was a fleeting second before the gap opened in the traffic and we both pulled away. He left me in his dust cloud. Then I saw him slowing down and pulling back into the traffic just in front of me. Was this biker playing games with me? Now it was my turn to overtake and in my wing mirror I watched as he pulled out behind me to follow me past the slower moving traffic. The set of traffic lights we both stopped next to each other again. This time I glanced across and saw him flip up his visor to reveal a piercing set of bright blue eyes. They crinkled at the corners like he was smiling or maybe smirking inside his helmet. It seemed like they saw me and it made me nervous and excited in equal measure. Then the lights changed and he flipped his visor down and pulled off slightly ahead of me. I was slower off the mark as my heart was pounding and my hands had started to shake on the steering wheel. My mystery biker could again have left me in his wake. But he was only just ahead of me so I floored the accelerator and caught up. I pulled in behind him so I could admire his form in the tight leathers that he wore. I was now plotting my next novel in my head and my fingers itched to start writing but I knew I would have to wait until I got home for that. The final set of traffic lights loomed and he was in the far lane and I was in the near to turn left in the last part of my journey home. He lifted his visor again and I drank in what I thought would be my last look at this blue-eyed biker. He winked and I licked my lips and smiled. I wanted those lights to stay on red forever, but they changed and I so returned, not daring to look back. Why on earth was I feeling like I should just turn the car around and follow him? In the end, I found the next lay-by and pulled over. I had a bottle of water in the boot and I needed something to calm me down. I leaned against the side of the car, enjoying the feel on my parched throat till it reached the heat bubbling inside. Christ, my vibrator was going to take a hammering tonight. Then I heard the throaty, unmistakable sound of his bike again. I froze and started to shake watching back down the road as the mystery man appeared over the brow of the hill and then slowed down to pull in behind my car. Fuck. 
My breath was coming out so fast that I hiccuped as I swallowed my last sip of water. The bottle dropped from my fingers as he climbed off the bike. Ooh, and what happens next? Well, you know, you might have to stay tuned and I might have to read part two another day. Anyway, <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. Um, obviously, feel free to follow me on any of my social media links as well as just on YouTube. Your uh, friendship is always appreciated and you can find all my other novels over on my Amazon page. So um, hope this has whetted your appetite a bit and maybe I shall read you part two shortly. Anyway, take care. Bye for now.